On this week's episode of the Maz Hakim podcast on Virgin Radio Dubai, she needs no introduction. Our favourite internet mum, please welcome Mama Wafa. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Such a pleasure to have you here, Mama Wafa. Honestly, you remind me so much of my mum as well and all of our mums. Um, where's where's mate? <laughs> What can I say? <laughs> now you know. Where's May? <laughs> <laughs> she's she's gone missing, but she's probably running late. We're going to be joined by May very very as shortly, usual. as, as usual. usual. <laughs> um, um, Mama Wafa, how did May convince you to be a part of her videos? <sighs> she is a sneaky girl. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know I am there. Yes. I didn't know at all. Right. But you know, she triggered me. You know. You know, I am so nice, yes. but when I am mad, I am mad. <laughs> and she knows that. And with her phone, she recorded me and she put me on the internet. Right. I didn't know. But then after a while, when my friend told me about May's uh, videos, yes, I saw the videos. And then she started, I, you know, I said this before. Mm -hmm. Okay, I am there to, is, to see if you are halal or haram. <laughs> Oh, I remember this story. Yeah. I definitely want to come back to that. Um, tell me, you are in your element in the Middle East. You absolutely love it here. How has Dubai been for you and what have you been up to? Oh, Dubai, really, it is the world in one place. Yes. I didn't, you know, I was here like 10 years ago, mm -hmm. completely different. Yeah. Every day there is a new thing. Yeah. So it is really good. Mm -hmm. You know, if I were not in America because my grandchildren, they are there, I would be here. Because this is between Egypt and America. This yes. is the best place to be there, mm -hmm. in the middle here. And it's a fusion of East and West. What have you been uh, up to while you've been in Dubai? I was everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everybody wants yes. a piece of Mama Wafa. I love that, yes. No, I visit many places. Yes. I was standing there. I stood in front of 3,000 at 60, 3,000 people. Yes. At 62, I was there, full of energy. I really loved it. I yes. really loved it. Yeah. I love that. So, so beautiful. And the internet also absolutely loves you. you. Um, and Mama Wafa, you know, success is a bit of a, a zigzag journey. It's not straight. Yeah. And we've all gone through adversities in life. You moved as an immigrant to the United States from Egypt. Um, tell us about some of the tough times in your life um, and in your family's life, you know, to get you to the point where you are today. The beginning, the start of life in America was really tough. Yeah. was really tough because, I, you know, my husband was my teacher in college. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I didn't know him that much. But I went there and I was by myself. No one from my family. And I came from a big family. Mm -hmm. And in eight years, I have five kids. Wow. Five Marshall. kids. <laughs> <laughs> you were very busy. I was suffering. <laughs> yeah. Wow, five children yeah. in eight years. In eight years. But you know, right. the good thing, I started, I went to, the, uh, to college. Mm -hmm. I, was, I have the kids, I went to college. And after my kids grow up uh, or went to school, I started working and studying again. I have a master's degree in education. Mm -hmm. And I became a teacher for 20 years, almost wow. 20 years. Wow. Yeah. I always, you know, what I like always to explore new things. Yes. I don't like to sit like that. I have the kids, the kids at school. I work with them. Mm -hmm. I took them everywhere. But I have to do something for myself. Yes. And this thing was studying. And then when I have enough time for me, I worked. Right. And then came the social media. Yeah. At the, end. <laughs> the social media sensation. At the end. <laughs> And is there a time that you remember that was very tough in your life when you, say, first moved or even when you had your children? Is there a moment or a particular time that you can remember? Uh, yeah, I have three kids. Yes. Uh, three girls yes. and two boys. I remember when, you know, I tried everything with them to be a good mother, to put them in Arabic school, Islamic school, Quran, everything. And the minute they hit high school, Oh my God, you could, you, I couldn't look at in them. In America, yes. One black all the time. Yeah. The other one doesn't want to talk to me. The other one is doing hair. What did I do wrong? Yes. But you know, I, it was really a shock for me. Yeah. But I started to say, 
you know, we are living in different Country. you know, culture and they don't have support system. So I have to be nice to them. I try to be nice, but <laughs> I tried. No, but the good thing after that, they started to go back. Yes. So I, you know, this is what I have to say. Give them space. Yes. You are there, but just give them a little space to grow up. Yeah. And they will come back to you. I hope so. <laughs> yeah, inshallah. Yeah, they, they go back. I guess as we get older, the advice that we get from parents, we only realize that later. Yeah. Later in life. Yeah. As we get older we, and we sort of go back to our roots, yeah. I think, later. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Mama Wafa, you're such a perfect example of a very supportive parent. What's your advice to parents to support their children on their journey and their career path? Because you've been very supportive to me um, and your other children. It is know. difficult. It is really yes. difficult. Yes. I tried. And I'm telling you again, my mother didn't go to college or anything, but she was there for us all the time. Yes. And her words are very few words, you know, you could yes. hear. Don't do that or you will lose that. And I am looking at her more. <laughs> no. Yeah. So this is what I try to do with yes. my kids. You know, I, I have to tell them the truth. I don't think you are doing the right thing. No, 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 no. Yes. But I am behind them. Like May, when she started her own business, I spent a lot of money. The jewelry business. <laughs> yeah, yes. the silver one. Yes. So I, I said, okay, we'll try. Maybe, maybe, who knows? And we lost. And then came the social media. I was so afraid. Yeah. I was so afraid she will, I will lose her. So I started being with her, uh, you know, being with her and yes. being with her. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, she, she's not doing, you know, alhamdulillah, something haram or anything. And she's trying and she's 29. She can take her yes. own decision, uh, you know. Yes. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to do. <laughs> Just <Yes>. support. <laughs> support. And I think it's, it's such a beautiful thing because especially... You know, in certain regions, it's very difficult for families to accept a non-conventional career path. Yeah. But for, for the daughters, they have to remember, no one, no one will love you the same like your mother. You, you, maybe sometimes you think your friends, sometimes you feel a stranger will do that. Yes. Never, never. Your mother is your backbone. You have to be with her, even if you fight. So what? So yeah. what? Yeah. And then you go back to your mother. Yeah. This is what I, you know, this is my advice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and what advice, if, if some parents are listening and they want their children to be in a particular career path and, and the children want to pursue something else, what's your advice to both the parents and the children? Yeah. You will make yourself, you know, miserable trying to force them, you know, I, I will tell you the truth. My father hoped I will be a doctor. I am not a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to force him because <laughs> to force me to be a doctor. <laughs> doctor, yeah. doctor mate sounds good though. <laughs> yeah. I couldn't. So what? So what? She's successful. She she has her uh, own life. She is trying. Uh, I tried. Yes. I, I didn't try. I tried, but yes. I didn't succeed. This is life. So you have to accept it. Don't make yourself, uh, you know, miserable. Move. This yes. Is, yeah. And as long as you're happy. Uh, and have good connection with her. Yes. yes. Yeah. So this is it. Don't lose your child because mm -hmm. life is short, yes. you know. Yeah. And um, Mama Wafa, what is the, like, what is the best way to differentiate when to follow tradition and old ways and kind of succumb to like new ways, like modern ways, because some people hold on to the old traditions and I tried. some people, yes. I tried, I believe, <laughs> I tried so hard to do that. Yes. No, but you know, it is a different word. Like I, I will tell you a simple thing. For the computer, the first thing I learned about the computer, on and off. And I stayed for one year, on and off. Yeah. <laughs> and then work soft, and yeah. then I started. I, it takes time, it takes time. So, and the world is changing so fast. Yes. You cannot hold them and let them, li you know, live your life. Yes. And texting, I will tell you <laughs> something else. <laughs> I see that kids <laughs> <laughs> So fast. Yeah, I, I learned by myself. Yes. 
I took my phone and sat there, and I, I am texting like, now, you yes, see. Yes. But for the kids, this is different life. So you have to accept that. Don't yeah. force your ways on them. Just guide them. This is your role as a mother. Guide them and tell them what you are doing and all this, and leave them after that. Yes. Yeah. You have to. Sometimes I think it's uh, difficult for parents to accept that and to see their children growing and developing into a different world. Yeah, you know? sometimes I want to say something. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, I just really hold it back. You hold it back. Yeah, sometimes, it, but yes. yeah. I <laughs> yeah, you're still in your own way. You know, um, also Maze now, congratulations, she's married. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, which I'm sure you're very happy about. Yeah. <laughs> She is out of my hair. She is <laughs> out of my hair. <laughs> She's out of your way. I think for, for parents, they want to see their children married, setting up a new home, their own home. Yeah. You know, so it's uh, how, how has things changed now that she's married or is it sort of the same? No, it's changed. <laughs> it changed. It really? At least she has Max to bother him yeah. now. <laughs> Not, Not so only me. You anymore. But I am happy, you know, she started to you know, to have her own family. This is yes. what I want. This is, I want her to have a, a successful career. Yes. Yeah. Doctor, you okay, yeah. okay, <laughs> maybe no, one doctor. day. But I want her to have a success, uh, stable family. Yes. And uh, a good man. And Max is really a good man. Yes. So what more do I need for her? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. So, yeah, I'm sorry. Um, tell me about this cookbook that you're working on, which I'm yeah, very excited. Yeah, I did it. Not only. Oh, it's finished now. Yeah, it is finished. Wow. Maybe you will have a copy today. Oh, my Maybe gosh. May will bring one now. Oh, my gosh. I would love that. Yes. Um, tell me about the journey of the cookbook. And May helped you also with the cookbook. May? Yeah. <laughs> Are you joking? May? I wrote the book for May. <laughs> you wrote it and she signed it at the end. No, because, you know, after marriage, she was calling me every day. No, 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 no. How do you do that? Oh, How do you do yes. that? I said, listen, this is, a, you know, let me write. So I wrote the book. Wow. And it is almost, you know, done. It is done. Egyptian. The yes. food she tastes, you know, she okay. tastes in my house. Yes. Or she likes to eat in my house. I put it in the book. And it is like a story behind the dish. Yes. Like, I love my mom. Yes. So everything that reminds me of my mom, her food, I wrote it there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's so beautiful. Yeah. Wow. I am glad. And uh, when will the book be available? It is available now. You can order it in May's Vault. Oh, wow. Com. Yeah. That's so I am hard work yes. and I try new things. <laughs> you know, and, and that's what I think a lot of people, I mean, that's what I love about you, but I think that's what a lot of people also love about you that you have evolved with me. You know, it's yeah. almost like, like I love how progressive you are and how accommodating you are. This is life. You have to live life. And life is like, you know, you have to challenge yourself. You don't sit in a chair and yes. this is it. Why, what will happen if I fail? Nothing. I will try and something else again. So this is what keeps me really going. I will try. I will try. I told I you try. I acted yes. before. Yeah. <laughs> Can you believe me? Oh my gosh, tell me about that. I love that. Mama yeah, I acted. And then I have many roles and I refuse, you know, refuse all of them. I said, no, 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 actress. No, no, no. I no, yeah, yeah, you're like, I'm too busy. <laughs> yeah. No, no. I, yeah. Right. It is nice. Life yes. is full of things. Yes. And, uh, you know, I like that. Yes. You have to live your life until the end. 62, I told you, it is a number. Oh, it's just a number. I love that. It's just you, a number. You are more energetic and more vibrant than a lot of 30-year-olds oh, I know. Good, uh, you know, yeah, good, good to hear. Genes and, but um, what, what's your advice to, um, I guess, to somebody who is in your age group, but they're not as active and not as, as accommodating to change? It, life will be so boring, so boring. You have to find something to do. Uh, I, ha I retired from my work as a teacher. Yes. And for the first week, I was sitting doing like, oh, what, what should I do? <laughs> what should I do? Yes. No, and I, you know, I went out. I joined many learning groups. Mm -hmm. I started reading, you know, learning how to read Quran. Yes. You know, whatever you want to do it. So uh, now, and May kept me busy. Yes. And very uh, busy. <laughs> very, very busy. I traveled with her to many places. I, I am so proud. I am yes. so proud. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. We're all very proud of her. I think we can all definitely. I hold me a year again. 
Of course. The dog ate my homework. <laughs> Whatever I can come up with. <laughs> how are you, mate? Good, how are you? Do you need some water or something? <laughs> no, I'm Nothing fine. for her. She's late. <laughs> she deserved nothing. Hey, I'm on. Yeah, <laughs> <Did> you see? <laughs> oh, oh, it's wow. so nice to have you, mate. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank Very you. excited to be here. Very excited. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. What have you been up to in Dubai? You, be, you guys have been very busy. Mama Wafa and I have been connecting. Like this one. Can I yeah, use yeah. this one? <laughs> Where's the slipper? Um, <laughs> what have we been doing? We've been running around. Yes. Uh, we were here for the One Billion Followers Summit. Yes. So that was awesome. It was two days of jam-packed. Um, activities and speakers. For me, for me, for me. Yeah, <laughs> we got to see people from all over the world who do different types of content. Yes. Uh, we spent a day in Abu Dhabi. Wow. We went to the Sheikh Zayed Mosque. That was yes. awesome. Yes. And uh, what else? Everything's a blur. <laughs> Everything else is a blur. Lots of lights, yeah. lots of lots, activity, lots of desert. Yeah, we went to JBR. We're, we're the type of people, like, we love to be super active. Yes. So we've been jumping around, honestly. And I love that. And, you know, speaking of active, I've been talking to Momo Wafa and I love how active she is. I love how active you both are, mm. you know. <laughs> was she, uh, yeah. uh, how She's, active was she on this interview? She was all, she was all, you know, speaking so highly. I of was you. so she, nice. I did, I said I paid her, I paid her to be <laughs> super earlier. nice to me today. <laughs> so if you, if she wasn't, I need a refund. Yes. I love um, May, tell me, how did your journey as a content creator start? It was honestly an accident. I never right. was like, oh, I want to be famous. I want to be an Instagrammer. I want to <laughs> be a social media person. For me, I, I just, um, I tried so many things growing up. I tried. <laughs> a doctor. <laughs> I, failed at, I failed at so many things. <laughs> um, I was pre-med for, for a long time, up till college. I was studying to be a doctor. Oh my gosh, I thought she was joking. No. Oh, she really? Not, sorry, <laughs> really? Oh, we paid a lot of money oh in this girl. <laughs> Why would I be joking? Why? Her education was so expensive. What made you think I was joking? <laughs> no, I would like to interview you. Yeah. <laughs> Why was that a joke? You Could you not see it? <laughs> no. I was bait. like laughing going, oh yeah, Dr. May. <laughs> You know what? I might go to med school now yeah. just to prove you were wrong. Oh my gosh. You were pre-med. Tell me about that. Wow. Um, yeah, I, I went to school. I was studying biology, believe it or not. Mitochondria. I know what that is. Um, and yeah, I studied for four years and I was at the last year of college and I was like, I cannot do this anymore. I can't. Yes. At that point, I was just like going through the motions, going through the classes. And then I was like, what else can I do? So I was like, let me do science law. And what, what that was for me was patent law. It was like um, putting patents on, on scientific inventions. Okay. And so I moved into that and it was very boring for me. It was a lot of paperwork and I tried it for two years out and I hated it. Mama, can you stop looking so depressed? <laughs> oh my God. Oh, this is like a very so embarrassing so interview. <laughs> She's about to cry on she camera. She reminds me, you know, of every failure she did. What oh, yeah. can I do? Mama, you heard this story every day. You, you, you were through this the story. The details still hurt. She's, she's, like, oh, she's about to be like, oh, yeah, she's like, like <laughs> but, um, <laughs> um, but yeah, and then uh, out of desperation, out of those failures, I was like, you know what? I want to do something fun. I want to do yes. something creative. So I, I created a jewelry company with my mom. I um, told that, her. I told okay, her. Okay, so that, that also did really my bad. Money. <laughs> my money. Yeah. A lot of money lost. <laughs> a lot of money, but um, a lot of fun. Yes. And that's all that matters. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and through that business, I was able to hang out with my mom more and create yes. content, create stories with my mom. And that was accidental that it would boom. Like, mm -hmm. people would love it. People would reach out. Mm -hmm. And I enjoyed it. I enjoyed having fun with my mom, spending time with my mom. Unlike before... <laughs> Um, yeah, she enjoyed wasting my money, you know, yeah. here and Mama, there. it's not about money, unless yeah. you're dating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's about love and family. 
<laughs> but um, <laughs> but yeah, so so through that, uh, I just created May's Vault, and it was really a general, it was a natural progression. Right. Uh, I just knew I loved it, and I started doing it more and more, and I quit my full-time job because that was the plan anyways. I was like, yes. I'm living at home. Uh, I'm not paying a lot of bills, but <laughs> okay. in America, they One pay nephew. for their yeah. food, their rooms. With their <laughs> from <laughs> smoking, <laughs> you stop paying your bills. <laughs> I, she reminds me of little things. Okay, sorry, sorry, <laughs> sorry, sorry. I will not talk. <laughs> Where was I? <laughs> the, 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 the risk was very low, yes. you know, and I was only wasting time. At that time, I was like 25 years old. So I was right. like, I got to jump in now. All I'm doing is wasting time. I have money saved up and I was working and I was living at home and I was single. I had no kids. I had nobody to answer to. Like, <laughs> so I just took the leap and I just started creating content. But I would really dedicate like eight, nine hours a day as if I was going to work. I would sit in a cafe with my laptop and research what content creation is, like take YouTube courses, take whatever I could. And um, I just was all in. I was in it. I love that. And I love that we can, I think you're so relatable and so is Mama Wafa. Mm -hmm. And I think so many people can relate. And I love how authentic you both are. Um, how, what's your advice to people on how to be more authentic on social media? I think uh, you can be your worst en enemy, but you have to believe in yourself first and not think about what other people are going to say. It's very, it sounds very cliche, but it's very hard to mm -hmm. like, shut out the outside noise, just go for it, okay? And just know, like, who's going to watch the videos? You never know. Maybe it's nobody. My friends. Like, yeah. Mom. <laughs> <laughs> you, you never know what it might be. Like, even I sometimes at this point in my life get nervous when I post something. I'm like, oh, my God, you know, blah, blah, blah. But then I'm like, at the end of the day, it's a video. It's a real, it's a TikTok. You'll move on. It's yes. well, like, who cares? Who cares? Um, I hope that's good advice. <laughs> that's a fantastic <laughs> advice. And I know, uh, Mama Wafa, you were talking about your friends. Tell us about this story, this infamous <laughs> story. And, and how you deal with, how people deal, should deal with their communities and like being scrutinized a little bit or having judgment. Yeah, because it's always the aunties from the mosque. Yeah. <laughs> the mosque is supposed to, can let me just say something. <laughs> no, 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 the no, no, mosque no. is supposed to be a place of worship. <laughs> No. Okay, go ahead, Momo. That's all I have to say. Screenshotting it. Now forward. I can't see the story now. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's no. what you were going to the mosque. Yeah. For. <laughs> Stop, my love. This is not good. I am banned from the mosque <laughs> now. I I not go. <laughs> One day, a friend of yes. mine, she called me. Yes. Hi. Mama, the mic. Oh. I, <laughs> hi, dear. I love you. I love your kids. I am, I have to tell you, you know how much I love you. Yeah. Your daughter is doing something behind your back. What? What? And she told me about the social media. And I, you know. Making videos. <laughs> she Making made me videos. sound, she yeah. made me, okay, what? Mm, she made me sound like. Uh, Marilyn Monroe. What kind of videos? Are you <laughs> Marilyn Monroe's yeah. daughter. Oh, wait, no, that's we not don't nice. No. I that was a weird example. <laughs> I don't know. I, I was. We to were her. trying to find them. No, sister, because I love you and I love your kids. We don't yes. do that. This is haram. And I was listening. Yeah, yeah. My daughter did this. Okay, okay. Boom. <laughs> And then, <laughs> and then, boom! The came storm the started. <laughs> the energy was transferred by uh, my way. Yes. But yeah, she made me sound like a Victoria's Secret model, which I don't think is really a bad thing because yes. I do see it. You know, sometimes I look in the mirror, I'm like, wow. <laughs> <More life>. so, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, listen, I can't, yes. I can't hear. What are you I have to leave. At? I have to what, are you <laughs> what are you laughing at? What are you laughing at? Victoria's so Secret, you. I'm available. <laughs> if you want. Uh, thank you so much. Keep this I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed. Like, haram stuff. Yeah. No haram. <laughs> I miss Mama Wafa already. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we were talking about judgy aunts and yeah. judgmental people. How do you deal with that, me? Listen, uh, with the judgy aunts, I try to put their kids, I, like I try to use their kids against, like I try to yes. tell the juice on yes. the, their on kids. The kids. <laughs> so it's kind of revenge. Yes. You want to start problems with me? I got more drama for you and your family. Yes. But that's not the right way. <laughs> but if you have the information 
and your the aunt is leading by example yeah. it's called karma yes. yeah, i hope that makes sense it does um other than that i i just try to brush everything off i think yes. Even with the judginess and drama, like people really only remember things for three days. It's like a three day rule. Like yes. even if you get canceled, which has happened to me a few times. Really? <laughs> Not canceled, but like you're you're in drama, you know what I'm saying? Or uproar. Don't say anything. Be confused. Because a lot of times people don't understand the power of acting confused. <laughs> I'm I don't know what's happening. Oh, I said that? Yes. Not me. Oh. Not me. <laughs> Give me three days, I'll come back to you about that. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> I love that. So it's it's a three-day sort of rule and just kind of step away rather than go into the drama head first. Yeah, because the world moves on really quick, relatively. Yes. And if you give attention to something, I learned it fuels the fire even more. So just uh, just watch it for a few days from far and, <laughs> and move on. There's a saying that what you focus on expands. Thank you. That's exactly what I was trying to say. Yes. In proper English. You got <laughs> Yes, girl. I'm going to memorize that one. <laughs> I love that. Now, success is not a straight up and down journey. It's zigzag. You know, it's all over the place. What are some moments of adversity or tough times that you remember that sort of shaped you? So I remember when we first broke out in social media, we were the... Arab mother and daughter duo and I love that and it, it made us unique and our relationship was what allowed us to connect with so many people but at the same time like being a minority especially in the US yes there's a lot of box boxes and barriers of representation that are out there and you don't get to like share your voice um, so when it comes to mainstream events like I didn't feel like we had that representation I could grab my phone and I could do whatever I want and social media is a relatively f free platform but I think when it came to the mainstream space it was hard to get that respect and a lot of times we would be uh, um, invited to events and I would see the treatment between like other content creators and me and um, like I didn't feel like I fit in and and so that was like a hard part for me to swallow like you know, it is it is a cold world and you have to be a go getter and you have to get things by yourself. You can't depend on like the industry to treat you right. You have to continue yes. to grow. And so that they come knocking on your doors with the right opportunity. Mm -hmm. And and how did you overcome that? Because you are such a great representation and so many people from this region and around the world, you know, a lot of expat children can sort of relate to you and your family as well. How did you sort of O overcome that I think okay so I'm very excited about opportunity and work yes. for me like in the beginning when I saw like a big name I'd be like yes we're going let's go let's do it and then when you get to something that that spark not everything that sparkles glitters I think yes. that's another phrase oh I like it because <laughs> yeah. when I'll you be get using that there one. and you get to like let's say a big event you see that yes it's a big name but you have to make sure that you're treated properly uh, for you, it's a give and take, like uh, the relationship between you and the company or whoever you're working yes. with is symbi symbiotic, which means it's a give and take relationship. Yes. Like you benefit and they benefit, not like, oh, this is a big event. Let me just break my back while I'm there and create 20 million videos. And you know what I'm saying? Like, I like it. You have to be able to say no. And I think for me, it was trial and error. And it was a lot of hurt and crying and like going all dressed up and excited and then having the world step on your head a little bit, but yeah. it humbles you. It allows you to like be prepared and know what to ask for next time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, makes you tougher. Yeah. I remember actually you, this triggered a memory of, I remember seeing a video of you at an award ceremony or something. And I think you were a little bit upset at, was it the exposure? I don't remember a hundred percent, but um, no, I, I was on a red carpet. That's it. Yeah. Yes. Oh, Is I, this I, bringing back? We don't have to talk about it. Either. I was on the red No, you know what? For me, that was something that I, I, I felt obligated to the people that were watching me because yes. I was representing the Middle East as the first Arab female TikToker on the wow. red carpet, which sounds amazing. And yes. I was so excited for that. And just to be there was like breaking barriers. Yes. And it was it was a huge movie release. Like, um it was a huge movie premiere. Mm -hmm. And so I was very excited. But then when I got there, uh, 
all that shines, all that glitters doesn't, doesn't shine. shine. <laughs> <laughs> and um, what hurt me the most is like, I, I felt like this responsibility to post content that would make my people proud and stuff, but the treatment and what I was given to work with wasn't allowing me to. Yes. And so I just did that video to share where I was at and then I moved on. Okay. Three day, the three day three, rule. The, for me, that was a one day rule. I was on, I was on to the next. Right. I love yeah. it. And I love how authentic and genuine and real you were about it. Yeah. Um, because I think that's so important. I think a lot of people struggle with that. You know? Yeah. I, I don't like to, for me, I feel like there's so many things online that are depressing and yes. sad. And so I always try to go and like uplift other people. So it was hard. It was even hard for me to be like, guys, I'm feeling emotional. Like even I was trying to say the story like a strong person, but I guess it makes you strong to cry in front of people sometimes or like share the, the struggles you're going with. Yeah, because people only see the the glittery side, the sparkly yeah. side of social media outside. Yeah. Um, and they don't see, I guess, the hard work or what happens behind the scenes. Yeah, I think uh, a lot of people make fun of influencers as well. And I can understand why, because I hang out with them sometimes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and I am one as well. Yeah. Um, but I think when, when you're in it, you understand that there's a lot of creativity, shooting the videos, being in front of the camera, Takes a speaking work, to yeah. people, networking, dropping videos, interacting. There's a lot of things that go into it. It's not like, let me pose in front of the mirror and blah, blah, blah. And for me, like, I, I wanted to penetrate something beyond exterior beauty. Yes. I wanted to do something where we can all connect from all over the world. Like, it's not like, a superficial thing mm -hmm. because for me I want to leave a legacy of like laughter and fun yes. and just being yourself like mm -hmm. no matter what it is how do you stay creative I mean man <laughs> uh, things happen like literally some of the videos are situations that happen to me in real life it's mm -hmm. all relatable things that like I'm sitting with my mom something happens I'm, we're dying of laughter I'm like boom write it down yes yeah or even sometimes I get inspired from things that happen and I just say something quick and I post it yes. and it's like, boom. For, for me, like, I love having fluid styles yes. and not being boxed into like, May does one thing, like one type of content right? or like one type of style. I like to switch it up. I like to be, uh, uh, you know, shake it a little bit on the <laughs> internet here and there. Like, you know, you never know what I'm going to do or, <laughs> or what, when. So I think it's fun for me to switch it up and like keep people on their toes. Yeah, I like it. And I noticed that I, I love that about you, that you have so many different styles and um, like it has the same theme, but different sort of styles, which I love. And so, you know, also so spontaneous. What's your advice to content creators on how to stay consistent? Because the upkeep of TikTok and Instagram is a lot and YouTube and so many things you're doing. I think uh, even me, I used to complicate things like, okay, I need the skit to go from here to there and explain it. And sometimes you just need a little audio, you need a little movement to explain what you're doing. Like with social media, there's so many ways to get your message across. Mm -hmm. And sometimes in six seconds, like the same message that you can use in a minute, there's ways to do it in six seconds. Mm -hmm. And that's a beautiful thing. Yes. And so it's, it's a good way to experiment with your style like sometimes I do a full skit and then sometimes I'm like here's the audio I could do the same thing yes. so I, I I say watch the trends use audios and try to make it shorter sometimes mm -hmm. like yeah. it, you know challenge yourself yes I like it and I think that's what I, we all love about TikTok as well that it's succinct information you you intake like, you know, something that could be a lot longer in such short bits of information. Yeah. So like consistency doesn't have to be like having a full uh, blown production every day. Mm -hmm. It could literally be something quick, something small that you want to share with the world, something relatable you want to share with the world, something yes. fun. Uh -huh. And you move on. That's it. Quick. One, two, three. I love it. And you you fit in so well in the UAE. This is your element. <laughs> oh, I know where she's going with this. <laughs> If anybody's watching, <laughs> are the right people watching? The right people. They always are. Oh. <laughs> um, tell me what you love about the UAE and would you ever move to Dubai? Because I feel like this oh. is your place. Well, <laughs> I love Dubai. <laughs> Someone give her a golden visa, uh, please. Thing. Oh, what is that? <laughs> I would love something golden. I love gold. 
I love Golden. I love everything with the world gold. Um, but you had a silver business, right? Be quiet. The past is the past. Right now we're focused on the future. Okay, so no, Dubai is a place where like the possibilities are endless. Yes. Even technology with content creators, they, they, like if you have a dream, yeah. they have a way for you to, to succeed it. if you have the will. I love it because every time I come here, I'm busy and running all over the, the yes. like when you were asking how how are we what are we up to I was like oh god so many things <laughs> oh god where do <laughs> yeah. I start like if you have an interest Dubai has it on another level and so for me as a content creator every time I come here I'm super inspired I love the the fact that the government super supports content creators yes. and encourages it mm -hmm. and for me like I love seeing like that support that's something that I miss when I'm back in the U.S. And like having people that show you so much love. And I, I do get that in the US, but there's something about Dubai, man. <sighs> it smells, uh, yeah. smells nice. <laughs> it, it, it smells like a good future. Yes. And so, yeah, I would, I, even my husband's really looking into moving into Dubai, wow. moving to Dubai. Right. He's been like searching on YouTube videos, uh, like, what is life like living in, in Dubai? Dubai? Yeah. And I'm like, just do it. No plan. Just do it. Uh, well, I, I think you would honestly fit in. You both would. F and Mama Wafa, bring her too. No, no, no. I, <laughs> yeah, I, you, know, you need a few continents between we need a we, we need a clause on the golden visa. Yeah. Only for me. Yeah. We need some space. <laughs> and what's next for May's Vault? You know, I really want to, I, I think for me, the long term of being a content creator is creating a, a big business out of it. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't want to be boxed into being just a content creator. I want to be a content creator that makes millions and millions of dollars as a, a strong businesswoman as yes. well. And yes. I think, um, like, I love saying it out loud mm -hmm. and I love uh, believing in it. Yes. And I think... I think there's so much potential for content creators outside of videos yeah. and making a, a long viable business for it. And that's my, my end goal is just having a crazy business behind social media. And so being, being an entrepreneur, I think, um, is a wonderful way also to capitalize on, you know, like, like a, a fan base sort of following because they love everything you do, you know. Yeah, and also I understand that I, I'm not gonna be hot forever. And it hurts me, yeah. maybe, it hurts me <laughs> to say this live on the radio, but you know, everybody's not hot forever. It's so true. you got to capitalize on your moment. You yes. got to make sure you have a long-term vision mm -hmm. and that like, even after you've created so many videos, the views are cool, but like, if you have nothing to show for it long-term, yeah. it's yeah. like, there's so many people that created videos, but they're like faint memories. So true. You know, like, yeah. oh, they used to be so hot. And then you're like, oh, yeah, 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 back in the day. Yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> you don't want to be nervous. I got to create more videos <laughs> and more businesses. So, so um, you like the idea of sort of reinventing yourself along the journey? Yeah. And I think it's good to evolve. Like, imagine me still creating videos at home with my mom. And, like, my audience is growing and moving on to new life experiences. Mm -hmm. But I'm doing the same thing mm -hmm. over and over again. Yes. There's going to be a period of... It gets boring. Yeah. It's boring. I think Mama Wafa is such a perfect example of, of somebody who has evolved and reinvented herself. Yeah. You know, um, I was talking to her about it earlier that I just, I was like, it's so, like, I admire that so much that she's so accommodating and she's, you know, reinvented. She's so open. She had so much advice as well to people in her age group. You know, it, it shocks me. <laughs> I swear to God, it shocks me. And I'm, I'm pretty sure it shocks the rest of the world to see a woman in the hijab not giving up on her life, not saying, you know what, let me stay at home. What are, the, what are people going to say about yes, me? Yeah. You know, I love that my mom is such a strong, independent woman who does whatever she wants. For love me, that it. was the biggest inspiration. Like, she's in the videos. She's traveling. Like, this is breaking barriers. Even, a, like, because I yes. live in America. So mm -hmm. they think people, Muslim women are at home, mm -hmm. um, oppressed listening, and, oppressed, yeah. uh, ask, have to ask their husband for every single little thing, um, you know, and, and they think that Islam is oppressive and we don't have fun and we're not outgoing. And so to have my mom be my partner in crime and just like 
just being there is breaking barriers. Just yes. her doing her thing and just showing it to the world is mm -hmm. so important. And she stepped outside of that and she's evolving as well. Like now she has a cookbook. Yes. yes. Oh and my now gosh. I'm like, wow, this is a, that's what I'm talking about. A businesswoman that created something out of social media as well. Yeah. So um, Mama Wafa was also telling me about her cookbook and um, and this new journey that she's on with her cookbook. And like you said, it's such a beautiful way to, you know, to l like showcase on a platform and help other people as well. Yes. <clears throat> and um, I, I think it's not just a regular cookbook. Mm -hmm. I love that it's sharing her journey of her moving from Egypt to America and her assimilating in America yes. and how important food was for her. And it, it gave her that comfort of like missing home, you know? Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's, it's like an immigrant story and I think it will help women all over the world who are thinking about moving anywhere, not yeah. even just America, just the struggles that she went through, like how her life played out and, mm -hmm. and where she is now. So it really is a cool progression book along with awesome recipes because my mom's cooking. I don't like to compliment her, <laughs> but her food, maya, maya. I love it. I wish I could have some of her cooking. She was mentioning that she's going to Egypt, so I th maybe I'll catch her on the way back. <laughs> yep. I can get or her you to cook some. You know what? Or you can attempt to make a recipe. That would be hilarious. <laughs> yes. That would be hilarious. We should have a challenge. Right? We you should. can make the best Momo Fat recipe. <laughs> um, she reminds me so much of, of my mom. Um, thank you so much for for being on the Maz Hakim podcast on Virgin Radio Dubai, mate. You are awesome. Thank you. Thank you for having me and, and my mom and everybody. And thank you for allowing us a platform where we could share our story and our Absolutely. voice. Thank you, guys. Thank you.